A safe and effective periretrobulbar block technique presented by Randolph Harvey CRNA and Eduardo D'Agostino MD. Hi, I'm Randy Harvey and this is Eduardo D'Agostino. We are anesthesia professionals with more than 30 years combined experience in the field of orbital regional anesthesia. Since 1991, I've instructed practicing ophthalmologists, anesthesiologists, and nurse anesthetists in multiple eye block techniques. In total, Eduardo and I have personally administered thousands of ophthalmic blocks. We have produced this video to provide some guidance to those beginning to perform orbital regional eye anesthesia. We start with a five-minute segment on the anatomy of the orbit and then finish with the clinical technique of administering the eye blocks through both transconjunctival and transcutaneous approaches. We hope this brief video will be of help in showing the anatomical principles behind administration of safe and effective periretrobulbar blocks. Now, we will identify the vital orbital structures as they are related to the needle tip pathway during the three stages of the orbital block. Stage 1. With the eye positioned in either a primary gaze position, or, as described by Gills and Lloyd in their technique, an upward gaze position, an infratemporal, transconjunctival, or transcutaneous needle insertion is made with a 25-gauge, 1-inch needle with its bevel towards the globe, approximately 2 millimeters lateral to the lateral limbic margin, and approximately 2 millimeters inferior to the globe. The needle tip is directed at a 120-degree angle towards the orbital floor and inserted through the conjunctiva or skin approximately 2 millimeters. At this point in stage 1, we observe that the globe position is superior to the needle tip. The lateral rectus muscle is lateral to the needle tip. The inferior oblique muscle is posterior to the needle tip insertion. During the technique, Understanding the course of the inferior oblique muscle is extremely important as it relates to the needle tip. Therefore, a short detailed description emphasizing the safety of this needle muscle relationship will be extremely useful to the viewer. According to Dutton in Atlas of Clinical and Surgical Orbital Anatomy, the description is as follows. The inferior oblique muscle originates on the anterior inferior nasal floor of the orbit and proceeds in a lateral posterior direction at about a 51 degree angle from the medial orbital wall. The inferior oblique muscle enters the tenons capsule a short distance from its origin on the medial side of the inferior rectus muscle. After crossing under the inferior rectus muscle, the inferior oblique muscle continues its posterior lateral direction in contact with the sclera in the tenons capsule until reaching its insertion point over the macula. Stage 2. The needle tip is redirected at a 90-degree angle to the frontal plane of the orbit, parallel to the visual axis. Then the needle is advanced posteriorly approximately 0.5 inches, or 12.5 millimeters, passing the equatorial plane of the globe. During this stage, the tip of the needle continues in the extraconal peribulbar space. At this point in stage 2, we observe that the globe remains superior and as the needle tip passes its equatorial plane, the curvature of the globe is no longer posterior to the needle tip. The macula remains medial to the needle tip throughout the procedure, along with the area inferior to the macula where a staphyloma may form. The superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, and superior oblique muscles are medial to the needle tip. The inferior oblique muscle is now superior to the needle tip. The lateral rectus muscle remains lateral to the needle tip. The optic nerve, the superior and inferior branches of the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the ciliary ganglion, and the ciliary nerves are medial to the needle tip. The ophthalmic artery, central retinal artery, ciliary arteries, superior ophthalmic vein, central retinal vein, and the venovortex veins are medial to the needle tip. Stage 3. The needle tip is rotated cephalad until the shaft of the needle rests gently on the infraorbital rim about 60 degrees or less to the frontal orbital plane. 
Then the needle tip is advanced into the mid-orbital space to a depth of 25 millimeters or 1 inch, measured from the infraorbital rim. The tip of the needle is now positioned in the intraconal retrobulbar space. At this point in stage 3, we observe the final needle tip resting position. The needle tip is safely located posterior to the globe in the lateral limbic plane between the lateral rectus muscle and the optic nerve. We can further envision from the earlier anatomical demonstration how the optic nerve, macula, and primary neurovascular structures remain medial to the needle tip. In addition, the lacrimal neurovascular structures are located superior to the needle tip. We will now view a video demonstration of the orbital block technique in an anatomical model utilizing the parallel approach and the geometrical calculations presented in the author's technique. Stage 1. With the eye positioned in either a primary gaze position or as described by Gills and Lloyd in their technique an upward gaze position, an infratemporal transconjunctival or transcutaneous needle insertion is made with a 25 gauge 1 inch needle with its bevel towards the globe approximately 2 mm lateral to the lateral limbic margin and approximately 2 mm inferior to the globe. The needle tip is directed 120 degrees towards the orbital floor and inserted through the conjunctiva or skin approximately 2 mm. The 120 degree angle avoids the needle tip pointing at the globe. Stage 2. The needle tip is then redirected 90 degrees to the frontal plane of the orbit, parallel to the visual axis. Reassess your landmarks and then slowly advance the needle tip posterior approximately 0.5 inches or 12.5 millimeters passing the equatorial plane of the globe. During this stage, the tip of the needle continues in the extraconal peribulbar space. Stage 3. The needle tip is rotated cephalad until the shaft of the needle rests gently on the infraorbital rim about 60 degrees or less to the frontal orbital plane. Reassess your landmarks and then slowly advance the needle tip into the mid-orbital space to a depth of 25 mm or 1 inch measured from the infraorbital rim. The tip of the needle is now positioned in the intraconal retrobulbar space. After negative aspiration, inject the local anesthetic at the rate of about 1 milliliter every 6 to 8 seconds until the orbit is full. Reversing the insertion technique and withdrawing the needle angled at 120 degrees towards the orbital floor will avoid the needle tip pointing towards the globe. Here is a demonstration on a live patient using the transconjunctival technique. Measure the distance from the needle insertion site to the cornea to determine the dynamic orbital globe relationship, here approximately 14 millimeters. Round up the 27 millimeter axial length to 28 millimeters and add the choroid sclera length, 2 millimeters. The eyeball length is 30 millimeters. Half the eyeball length is the equatorial plane at 15 millimeters. Subtract the initial measured distance, 14 millimeters, and you get the needle insertion depth to the equator is 1 millimeter. Stage 1. Insert the needle tip with the bevel towards the globe, 2 millimeters lateral to the limbus and 2 millimeters inferior to the globe at 120 degrees toward the orbital floor, approximately 2 millimeters. Stage 2. Redirect 90 degrees. Slowly advance the needle tip posterior half an inch, passing the equatorial plane of the globe in the extraconal space. Stage 3. Rotate the needle tip cephalad until the shaft of the needle rests on the infraorbital rim. Then slowly advance the needle tip into the intraconal space to a depth of approximately 1 inch. Here now is the transcutaneous approach. Measure the distance from the needle insertion site to the cornea to determine the dynamic orbital globe relationship, here approximately 4 mm. Round up the 24.7 mm axial length to 26 mm and add the choroid and scleral length, 2 mm. The eyeball length is 28 mm. Half the eyeball length is the equatorial plane at 14 mm. Subtract the initial measured distance of 4 mm, and you get the needle insertion depth to the equator is 10 mm. Stage 1. Insert the needle tip with the bevel towards the globe, 2 mm lateral to the limbus and 2 mm inferior to the globe at 120 degrees towards the orbital floor through the skin. Stage 2. Redirect 90 degrees, 
and slowly advance the needle tip posterior, passing the calculated equatorial plane of the globe in the extraconal space. Stage 3. Rotate the needle tip cephalad until the shaft of the needle rests on the infraorbital rim, then slowly advance the needle tip into the intraconal space. We hope you have found this video to be informative and that it will be a valuable tool to integrate into your practice.